like, share, subscribe. Hey y'all, welcome back. In number 30, they're giving us the first three terms of a geometric sequence. So the first one is 3 halves, the second one is negative 3 fourths, and the last one is 3 eighths. Now there's kind of a roundabout way of coming up with the expression that would represent the nth term. Basically, they're wanting an expression so that whatever number you plug into n will give you the correct term in the sequence. So like, in other words, if I plug in 1, I should get uh, 3 halves. If I plug in 2, I should get negative 3 fourths. And if I plug in 3, I should get 3 eighths. So this is the first term, the second term, and the third term. Uh, I, you know, there's a way to come up with this equation algebraically, but with this being a multiple choice question, I think the fastest and, you know, most efficient way of working this out is going to be to just plug in 1, 2, and 3 into the expressions that are given in the different answer choices and see which one gives you the correct terms. So let me pull up the calculator and we'll just start hammering away at this. So the first one is 3 times negative 1 to the n minus 1. And I'm going to start by just typing in 1. Over 2 times n. And so basically I'm going to plug in 1, and what I'm hoping is that it equals 3 halves. If it equals 3 halves, which it does, that doesn't necessarily mean that this is the right answer, but we know that the first number checks out. Okay, so maybe I'll make a little table here, a little chart, to help me keep track of which ones work. Um, so 1, 2, 3, and so, so far this one works for choice A. So let's try number 2. If I substitute number 2 into n, instead of 1, I'm looking for three, uh, negative 3 fourths. So I'm going to change this n to 2 and this n to 2. And sure enough, negative 3 fourths works. We might get lucky and get the first one. Uh, how great would that be? So let's try the, uh, the next one. We're going to substitute 3. And if we're lucky and the answer is choice A, we're going to get 3 eighths. But we do need to check all three, because it's possible for two different sequences to have the same first couple of terms. So I'm going to substitute three. And do we get three eighths? No, we get one half. So unfortunately, our answer cannot be A. Let's try B. So with B, uh, the sequence is very similar, but I guess a little bit different here. We've got three times negative one and then the exponent is just n instead of being n minus 1. So I'm going to start with 1 and then over 2 times n. So 2 times 1. And that starts off with a negative 3 halves. Okay, so, well, I guess the silver lining here is we don't have to try 2 or 3 because we already know that 1 doesn't work. So it can't be b. All right, so we move on to c. This one looks a little bit more like the first, in fact, it's exactly the same as choice A, except it says 2 to the n instead of 2 times n. So we've got 3 times negative 1, oops, to the power of n minus 1, so I'm just going to start with 1, 1 minus 1, over 2 to the n, so 2 to the 1, and we get three halves. Okay, so that checks out. Let's try number two. So if I plug in a two here instead of one, I'm going to change this in, and I'm going to change this in. Negative three-fourths? All right. Okay, so two checks out. I'm, kind of, I'm getting a good feeling here. Kind of like how this is working. I think we might have a winner. We're going to type in three here now for n. And we get 3 eighths. Look at that. So now we know the answer choice. The correct answer here is C. I will say on this one, since the cleft is a time to test, 
if I'm working this this out and I come across this problem and I and I get checks for each one of these terms and I find that those three terms work, I'm going to move on to the next question. But if you do have time at the end of the test, I would go back to questions like this where we're just testing the answer choices and go back and make sure that D and E do not work. I can assure you that they don't, but it's a good practice if you have time only. Um, you know, you only get about a minute and a half per question. So if you're running short on time, I would just, you know, move on. Um, and on the first run through, I would just move on once you find the answer anyway. And then after you're done with the test, go back and look for a couple questions like these to go back and, and just to verify that you got the right answer. Well, that's it for number 30. Thanks for watching, and y'all have a great day.